Hello everyone, I'm the Spookiest Ghost and welcome to another video. So today we'll be looking at a lovely little subreddit called r slash tumblr in action that is basically just a nice little archive of all of the dumb things keyboard slash social justice warriors say on the interwebs. Before I start, I did want to quickly mention something. I will be making a lot more reddit videos than before or at least I think so. Despite what you may think, this is not because I'm trying to get more views or money, because I know that there are going to be people that immediately say that's the reason. It's actually because Tumblr has really, really screwed me over with their new rules and it's become significantly harder to find content on there, but Reddit always has good content. Trust me, I'm not doing this for views or subscribers or money because most of my most popular videos are in fact videos that are part of the Tumblr Toxicity series and while I don't plan on ending the series, it's going to be a lot harder to upload them frequently. I mean, I wanted to make a Tumblr Toxicity on the anti-recovery movement, but all I could find was anti-anti-recovery posts. Which is good in the sense that people are starting to think, um, but, but not good in the sense that I don't have any content to make a video on. So that became kind of out of the question. I uploaded the other kin Tumblr toxicity, which you should go watch by the way, but only because I had posts saved from like last summer, so that's how I was able to do that. But yeah, the point is that change is coming and I just want you guys to be aware. If you have anything that I could make a Tumblr toxicity out of though, please send it my way because I'd love to. After all, I'm starting college this year, so I'm gonna need to make that YouTube coin to cover my like $8,000 of debt from my student loan that I'm gonna have to take out to pay for this one semester alone. But but anyway, I hope you guys aren't mad about that and if there's a subreddit you'd like to see me cover, let me know because I'd love to. Also, really quick shout out to a fan and friend of mine, The Playing Hand Show, for making me a really cute animation. I'm going to put it in the description because I really liked it and I thought it was really cute and I wanted to share it with you guys. So if you have a couple extra minutes to spare, maybe go check it out. Anyway, I'm gonna shut up now and let's just get into the posts. At any given time, at any given bookstore, there is a book on display with a swastika on the cover. You mean like history books? You know guys, this person is right. Swastikas are a symbol of hatred and white supremacy. So let's just get rid of them entirely. You know what? Let's just forget that the Holocaust even happened. And while we're at it, let's ignore the existence of other racist groups too, like the KKK, because it's offensive to even talk about it. I mean, it's not like the reason people talk about the Holocaust and Nazis and World War II is so that we never forget what a tragedy it was and make sure that something like that never happens again. No, it's... It's purely because the world is racist and we want to offend people. So like, let's just stop it. And yes, I'm looking at you, Barnes and Nobles. Hashtag Stop Racism 2019. I've been sad lately and so I've been watching Friends, which is what I do when I'm sad. And my god, that show is so homophobic, transphobic, fatphobic, misogynistic, and white as fuck. I need to find another comfort show. now. As a fan of Friends who is currently watching the show, I'll admit that they do make some jokes about fat people, gay people, women, etc. But you know what? This show first aired 25 years ago. You know, back when people didn't get offended over literally everything. And obviously, there are still genuinely offensive things. For example, I mean, if they were saying things like, gay people should get electroshock therapy so that they can just stop being gay, then yeah. I can see why you'd be offended, but they never did that. They never did anything close to that. The first thing that comes to my mind when I think of friends being <clears throat> homophobic is when they were watching Ross's baby so they could pick up chicks because they thought that women loved babies and the first pair of women that came up to them asked them how long they'd been together. Then, as um, any straight man would do, uh, they started backtracking and saying, no, 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 we're not gay, and basically anything that two straight guys would say to make someone know that they're not gay. Oh no, how awful. How dare two straight men want two attractive women to know that they aren't a gay couple and are in fact actually attracted to women. Unacceptable! 
And on top of that, if Friends is so homophobic, why did they have a lesbian couple in the show from literally the first episode? And why would they show how they're a happy couple and even have a baby together? I mean, if it was so homophobic, why would they be showing lesbianism in a good light? And mind you, it's not sexualizing or fetishizing lesbians either. It's just showing two women living as a couple together happily. But yeah, so homophobic. Y'all are like, OMG, I want to see men in crop tops. More men wearing eyeliner. Well, you know what I want to see men in? Therapy. Learn to process your emotions, please. Could you be any more condescending. I agree with the general message of men taking care of their mental health, but why do you have to be such a bitch about it? I mean, you can't just say, Hey guys, getting help for mental disorders or even just showing your emotions and talking about them when you need to isn't a bad thing and is actually really important for your overall well-being. No, instead you have to say it like, <laughs> look at these pathetic men not seeking help for their problems because of toxic masculinity. Stop being such a pussy and just go see a therapist already. Yeah, cause I'm sure that'll make them feel so much better. I'm sure if there's a depressed man that's too afraid to seek mental help because he's afraid of judgment, that this extremely condescending and judgmental post will help him get past that fear. Of course. What's the difference between white people and yogurt? If you leave yogurt alone for 200 years, it will develop its own cultures. Wow, look at all the white people with no culture. I hate when people make the bullshit argument of white people have no culture. Like, bitch, do you know how many white countries there are that have been around for literally thousands of years? You really think that over those thousands and thousands of years they didn't create anything of their own? If that's true, why are the cultures of European countries so different? For example, why are the cultures of Russia and France so different if all white people have no culture? And then, here's another great question. Why is it that white countries such as Greece have some of the most influential cultures out of any other country? I mean, you go to pretty much any history museum or any art museum and you're bound to find sculptures and paintings and other works of art from ancient Greece, one of the most influential historical time periods. Same thing with ancient Rome, because Italy is also another white country that is very, very influential culturally. I mean, don't fucking sit here and say that white people don't have culture and then go eat pizza, because I thought you said white people don't have culture, so why would you be partaking in something that is part of a white person's culture? I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Not to mention, then there's religions. For example, most Jewish people are white. Are you gonna fucking sit here and tell me that there's no such thing as Jewish culture? Because last time I checked, as a Jew, my culture is very different from a lot of America's culture. Things such as lighting a menorah on Hanukkah and eating matzah on Passover. I mean, that's a completely different culture, not taken from anywhere, but created by Jewish people. Even Christianity has its own culture. Things like Christmas, which is a huge part of Christian culture. Who was it originally created by? Nordic people. <laughs> Hello everyone, Future Spooks here. I uh, hope you're enjoying the video, thanks for watching. Just wanted to quickly come on here and correct myself. Christmas is actually from Yule, which was created by pagans, and I believe that paganism was actually originally practiced by Germanic peoples, and then was adapted by Nordic people as well. You also have to understand that this is before Jesus was a person you know, he wasn't alive at this time. I don't want any angry Christians in the comments talking about how I'm undermining Christianity. I'm literally talking about where most of the Christmas traditions came from, such as having a Christmas tree. These things all come from Yule. So just wanted to correct myself because I know that paganism is not exclusive to Nordic people. Don't want to sound like an idiot, even though I probably still sound like an idiot and I always sound like an idiot. Sorry for the interruption. Who were white? So the point is that there are so many different white 
people from different countries that are of different origins, that you cannot say that white people have no culture. So here we have a picture of a guy trying to fit his suitcase in the overhead bins in a plane, despite the fact that it clearly isn't going to fit. It's also a pretty selfish thing to do because if he was hypothetically able to fit the bag in there, it would take up all the space and not allow anyone else to put their carry-on luggage in the overhead compartment, which is a dick move. So this guy's an asshole. Now, the caption is a little bit rude too, but it's not really the worst thing. It's not that big of a deal in my opinion. Someone then replies with a picture that says, not all men, but definitely this fucking guy, which in my humble opinion is also not that bad. Actually, that's kind of funny and I feel like I would use that as a reaction picture as well. But then, here's where it gets worse because some smartass decides to respond with yes all men. And then it gets even better because then this guy under her decides to write yes all men times two sincerely a man. And ugh, oh boy. You know what I as a woman hate. Men who act like all men are human garbage and deserve to die because feminism, am I right? And you want to know why I hate this? It's pretty simple. It's because it's pathetic. It's always a pathetic attempt to get girls to like you because wow, you're such a great guy who cares so much about women's rights. I'm a woman, so obviously I'm too dumb to see that you're only saying that to earn good boy points in hopes of getting in my pants. I mean, it's literally the same situation as men that use I'm a feminist as a pickup line at the bar. I'm sorry, sweetie, but you don't sound like a nice guy. You sound like a low cock bitch and it's pathetic. Sincerely, a woman. I almost never go to parties. And if I go, I just sleep, eat, watch TV, fuck a dog, or anything else that is a thousand times more entertaining to me than a party. I am asocial and introverted. I don't find it fun to socialize or to drink alcohol. Parties are super boring to me. Let's play a game. Can you spot the part of this sentence that's out of place? I just sleep? No. Try again. Watch TV? Almost, but not quite there yet. Fuck a dog? Ding ding ding! Congratulations! You're a normal human being that thinks having sex with dogs is weird as fuck and shouldn't be bragged about on the internet or anywhere for that matter. For real though, um, I really hope that this is a joke. For the sake of the dog in this person's profile picture and the pets of any of their friends. Also, I hate people that go to parties and do nothing but complain. Like, I went to a party once and I didn't enjoy it, so guess what? I don't go to parties anymore. And now I don't have to do things like fuck dogs to stay entertained. Although any normal person can find a million other things to do to occupy themselves other than bestiality, but I digress. There's nothing wrong with not liking to get drunk and party all the time, but you're not special. So just, if you don't like parties, just don't go to them. It's as simple as that. Although, I think not many people are going to be inviting you to parties after this. Shared by a gay guy I know. Guys that share this kind of sexist garbage are usually the real creeps. Me watching a guy approach a girl making sure they know each other and she's safe before continuing with my day. Oh my god, it's a man walking up to a woman in a public place about to try to talk to her. Is that a... But don't worry, because I'm here to save you by standing at a distance and watching you two have a conversation. That's not creepy at all. What do you mean? What do you mean you don't want me to watch you from a far distance? <laughs> you know, believe it or not, there was a time when the only way to meet new people, other than being set up by a friend or relative, was to actually go up to them and talk to them in real life. Wow. There's really nothing crazy about trying to meet new people in a social situation, like a bar, club, or party, by going up to them and talking to them. Now, if the other person isn't interested and the instigator won't leave them alone, then it becomes a problem. But just two people who just met having a conversation? Not actually that bad. How to prove someone's point 101. I wish Tumblr had more of a educate the ignorant attitude as opposed to send death threats to the ignorant. I love how this post was made by a cis white boy. I like how you completely ignored the message and instead focused on who posted it. Well, yeah, 
there's a uh, there's really nothing else to say but uh how to prove someone's point 101. Do you think men twitch so much in their sleep because their bodies can't handle not saying something stupid for that long so it finds another way to be annoying? Well, I would comment on this one, but I don't know if men twitch in their sleep because I've never slept next to a man and I probably never will because I'm all alone and will probably be alone for the rest of my sad, pathetic life. Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. Making unoriginal jokes all by myself. What do you mean I'm being dramatic? I am not. I mean, I may not even be legally old enough to drink yet, but I know I'll be alone forever, okay? I am not dramatic. Provide sources, white people. I hate when I get into an argument with a cishet whitey and they provide no source for their side. You might say, but blank, you NSBSD provide sources. I don't know what that means. No, I don't. That's because unlike white people, I'm systematically undermined and have had and still do have limited education and access to public services. Cis people can walk into a library and get what they need immediately. But libraries are designed to discriminate against plus size and LGBT people. It is a very hostile environment towards marginalized identities. White people have access to all these things and therefore should source their arguments for the good of all of us. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. First of all, you don't need libraries to find sources. I mean, what is this? The 20th century? <laughs> Just use Google. Your computer can't discriminate against you. Or at least not yet. But they will once the singularity happens and robots take over. You know, that's meant to be a joke. But I'm not even gonna lie. I'm actually kind of scared that the singularity will happen. But anyway, that's besides the point. As I said, we have access to an infinite library of information on these things called computers and Goggle. They're really great. You should check them out sometime. Also, since when do libraries and librarians have the magic power of seeing people's sexual orientations? I don't know if you know this, but gay people and straight people a lot of the time, look quite similar. It's almost as if not every gay person looks like the stereotypical butch lesbian or flamboyant gay man. Huh, who would have thought? And as for fat people, is the library having regular sized chairs considered fat phobic? Cause I don't know what else is discriminatory against plus size people in libraries. I mean, I was plus size for most of my life and I didn't feel discriminated against in libraries. And in both of my local libraries that I go to, there are not only employees there that are overweight, but there are even black people that work there. Oh my God, can you believe it? It's almost as if it's the year 20. 2019 and discrimination in public places such as public libraries is illegal. Wow! Imagine that. So, I think this is a good place to end the video. If you liked it, you can leave a like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments what subreddits I should cover next. I'm thinking r slash insane people Facebook, so let me know what you think of that. If you would like to stay updated with my channel, you can follow me on my social medias, which will be linked in the description down below. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again next time. I'm the spookiest ghost and I'll see you later.